anugerahkan kepada kami satu hari di mana kami boleh mengingat kembali bahwa Engkau telah mengakhiri suatu pertandingan di dalam kehidupan ini dan kau mengatakan it is finished sudah selesai terima kasih Tuhan untuk anugerahmu kepada kami terpujilah namamu ialah firman Tuhan yang kami akan dengar pada siang hari ini boleh menjadi berkat buat kami Terima kasih dalam Tuhan Yesus kami berdoa. Amin. Selamat hari kebangkitan. Saya kira di antara saudara-saudara banyak yang asing. Karena ada yang bahasa Inggris dan saya tidak tahu bahasa Inggris, jadi yang bisa bahasa Inggris tolong diterjemahkan yang tidak bisa bahasa Inggris. Oke, okay. hari ini adalah hari yang dikatakan pasca dan banyak. Hal yang Hah? Oh, translate Oke okay. Mungkin dalam bahasa Inggris saja ya Tetapi saya tidak ngerti bahasa Inggris Gaduh-gaduh saja ya Oh Easter is resurrection. Don't be messed up with the term Easter. But the purpose is to explain that Jesus is risen on this God's day. Do you know God's day? Sunday. No, God. Sun, but Sunday means the Lord's Day. They declare it the Lord's Day is Sunday after the Sabbath, not the day of Sabbath. The day of Sabbath is Saturday. So the next day is Sunday is the Lord's Day. So that's why they call it the Lord's Day. You can read on the Revelation, the book of Revelation, they explain it, the Lord's Day, chapter 2, Revelation chapter 2. Oh, chapter one, not two. Verse 10.
I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet. So that is on the, the Lord's day. It's on the Sunday. Okay. Now I want to explain to you most of the time the celebration of Easter or Resurrection Day only mention about the resurrection of Jesus. Very rare people talking about what's going on before the resurrection. That's what I, I want to uh, explain it to you. Uh, I want to read it from Matthew chapter 27, Matthew 27. I'm sorry, I have to get the English Bible. Matthew 27. Verse 45. Twenty seven, verse forty five. Jesus died on the cross. Now, from the sixth hour until the ninth hour, don't confuse about the term, okay? When you read it from the sixth hour, it doesn't mean that this is the time, the six o'clock. Okay? Don't, don't misunderstand this. Now from the sixth hour until the ninth hour, there was darkness over all the land. It's amazing, right? Over all the land. When you read this, the term over all the land, where is it? All the world? It's, it's not all the world. It's only in Judea. Only in Judea. Okay, so I want you to understand this, the, the term and the Bible when they read it, sometimes confusing because if people didn't understand and if they didn't study the Bible, they don't really get the meaning. 46, and about the nine hour Jesus cried out, okay. They use the term six hour and now nine hour. And about the nine hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice saying, Eli, Eli, Lama Sabachthani. That is, my God, my God, why you have forsaken me? Some of those who stood there when they heard that said, this man is calling for Elijah. Immediately, one of them ran and took a spong, filled it with sour wine, and put it on a reed, and offered it to him to drink. The rest said, let him alone. Let us see if Elijah 
will come to ship him. Verse 50, Jesus and Jesus cried out again with a loud voice and yielded up his spirit. Then behold, the veil of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom and the earthquake and the rock was split and the grave were opened in many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised and coming out of the graves after his resurrection and then went into the holy city and appeared to many. 54. So when the centurion and those with him who were guarding Jesus saw the earthquake and the things that had happened they appeared greatly, saying, Truly, this was the Son of God. And many women who followed Jesus from Galilee, ministering to him, were there looking on from afar. Among whom were Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James and Jose, and the mother of seventy sons. Okay, remember this, the six miracles, have you read about this, the six miracles, this is like stranger, you strange to hear that there is a miracle. And that time, the first one was that. Let's open another verse forty five. Twenty-seven forty-five. This is the first miracle, the sixth miracle. But I want to talk about the first one. The next week, the next week, and the next week, I'll talk about all of this because of the time I only cover only one miracle. It's a darkness. When you read the Bible. The term darkness, what in your mind about darkness? Usually the term darkness is the absence of light, right? When there is no light, there is darkness. Okay. During the night, when the sun didn't show up, so it's darkness, okay? but still there is stars in, in the sky. So you can see it. But what happened when like the, during the volcano eruption, I experienced it when the, they call it Gunung Agung. Gunung Agung is the mountain in Bali during that time of the 62 eruption, all the area was, it's like smoke is clouded from the debris, uh, the very fine sand cover all, I think it's in, in Java. And there is no airplane around it because it's dangerous. So we cannot see. It's like we have to uh, moving around, but even when you use the flashlight, you cannot see anything. This happened in 
Egypt. When the Lord cursed the Egyptian, and there is a record on the Exodus 10. Can we read Exodus chapter 10? Exodus chapter 10, verse 21. And Jehovah said unto Moses, stretch out the hind toward heaven, that there may be darkness over the land of Egypt. Remember this. The verse is very powerful. It said, even darkness which may be felt. During the night, when there is no light, even there is no light, can you touch darkness? Because darkness is not real. It's not like something material. You can touch, right? But this is the Lord said even the darkness which may be felt so you can touch it the darkness you can touch but not this kind of darkness that was happened when Jesus on the cross. Okay, let let's open a gun on the Matthew twenty seven. Forty five. Now from the sixth hour, there was darkness over the land until the ninth hour. How do you count it? Six hour until nine. From where? from six o'clock, start, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, okay, so start at six o'clock in the morning, when they call it six hour in twelve o'clock noon. Okay? You understand this? The calculation? This twelve at noon. So at noon means the sun is at your head. Right? Very bright shining sun light. Very bright. But what happened? It's dark. Dark. 
but all the darkness is only in the land of Judea. Not until the whole world. Okay, let me explain. Have you seen the eclipse, the sun eclipse? Did you ever experience it? The darkness. How long is it? One hour? No? It's very quick. Only a few minutes. But this, they, te they tell you that the darkness is the six until the ninth. It means 12 o'clock. 12, 12, 1, 2, 3. So it's at 3 o'clock, the darkness is gone. It's become normal again. So this is not eclipse. What is it? What kind of darkness is it? This is not real darkness. It's not real darkness like what they call in the, in the Old Testament that you can touch it, not the kind of darkness. This is supernatural darkness. Okay, that super net, supernatural darkness never happened before and after. Only during the sorrow of Jesus on the cross. Because the darkness related with the sorrow of Jesus. Okay, at at nine o'clock in the morning, nine o'clock in the morning until twelve o'clock in the morning, at noon, Jesus hanging on the cross. There is there's a busy time. There's a busy time. Do you know what happened? The busy time. All the soldiers, all the people mocking to Jesus, split on Jesus, and throw it stone to Jesus. Okay, all the soldiers may be gambling. Uh, who will get the the cloth, the clock of Jesus? So everybody is busy, and Jesus is busy too. Okay, what Jesus did? He responded to the thief. He sighed and crying, Lord. Remember me when you go to the, your kingdom. So Jesus promised. Today, you will be with me in paradise. So Jesus is busy. But until 12 o'clock at noon, everything silence. Silence. No voice, nothing. 12 o'clock until 3 o'clock. So after 3 o'clock, suddenly the darkness is gone and everybody is busy again. And that time, situation become normal. In the Bible, they call it somber silence. What is somber silence? So that's why during that time, usually the church tradition, they call it on the Wednesday. What is Wednesday? Huh? In the calendar, the church calendar Wednesday and Thursday 
and Friday and Saturday. Saturday is they call it silence or somber day. It's quiet, no activity. And then on the Sunday, there is activity again. What is that? Jesus rise again. Okay. So this is the record of the gospel that I want to telling you. Is it only in the Bible that telling you the darkness? Only that Matthew recorded? Is it true in reality? Is it true in uh, the fact? Is it true in the history? Is it true? Yes, it's true. I read the, the record of the history. There is a historian. His name is Celsus. When you read the bibliography, or you can open the Google, whatever you, you try to search. So Celsus as historian is a uh, anti Christianity uh, during that time. But he wrote a record about the history, what did happen during the Jesus crucifixion. And there is a record up there. And also the church fathers, they call it the Tertullian. Uh, di dalam bahasa Indonesia seringkali disebut Tertullianus Bapak Gereja. He lived the end of the second century, and he very briefly he wrote against all the Christianity at that time. He wrote during the dying of Jesus, Jesus dying on the cross, and the son no this is this is the story right and you can you can find it later in the the book of the revelation but this the Tullian wrote and there is a record here and there is a record in the story about this that the sun Sun is still there. Okay? The sun is still there. And it's still very bright during the daylight, shining all the world. All the world. But for some reason, there's God's plan. It's not shine very shining and the spot when Jesus crucified. This is related with the Jesus agony. He's very suffer. Suffering, very suffer during that time. Struggle because it's between life and death between life and death so the bible explain just briefly about the darkness but it didn't explain how he suffered how he struggled maybe when you saw the movie about what's that the passion of christ 
you saw the soldiers smash the body of Jesus, some of the split the body. This is the agony, but the most agony Jesus experience is not that time, but during the dark hours. So you understand, huh? So that's why the darkness is the purpose of the Father show up during this time. Show his power to the world that he the one to control the world. He the one that control the earth. He the one that control the universe because he creator. He also the one who saved the sinners. And we want, Jesus want us to experience it. When we read the Bible to show us his purpose, the miracle, when he, the creator, disturb, he can disturb, right? All the sunshine out there, but during this time, only the spot in Judea where Jesus crucified, there's darkness. How we will explain this? The miracle. There is a lesson about this miracle. The first one. The darkness, the miracle of darkness, is the involvement of the father to the character and the mission of Jesus. So the, the miracle of darkness is the involvement of the father to the character and the mission of Jesus. How do we know? Let's read on the Matthew 27, verse 43. 27, 43. He trusted on God, let him deliver him now. If he desire him, for he said, I am the son of God. Who said that? There is the crowd, the people. When Jesus come to them, I am the son of God. Then people didn't believe it. Okay? All the people when Jesus is saying that I am the son of God, they didn't believe it. So that's why he trusted on God. Let him deliver him. Now, he desired him, for well, he said, I am the son of God. Wherever you go, when you're telling people that Jesus is the son of God, hmm, people don't believe it. People don't believe it. But you have no authority, have, you have no power to, to tell them that, yeah, Jesus is the son of God. People still don't believe it. But during this time, when Jesus telling them, and then he was crucified, during the darkness is the truth manifestation that the Father participated during his suffering. And everybody, everybody will help the darkness. 
That means God participated during the suffering of Jesus. Okay, Matthew chapter 16, verse 1. Matthew 16, verse 1. Then the Pharisees and Sadducees came and testing him as that he would show them a sign from heaven. So the darkness, the miracle of darkness is the sign from heaven. Nobody can meet it, the darkness. Okay? Nobody. Even the nature cannot meet. Like eclipse. Only a few minutes, but the darkness that the Father showed them when Jesus died on the cross, three hours. And the darkness is different from the eclipse. The eclipse only happened a few minutes, but covered the half of the, the world, the globe, half, during the time when the night all cover the eclipse during the day but remember this eclipse never happened on the full moon remember this eclipse never happened on the full moon during this time is passover Passover always happen on the full moon. Okay? Remember this. The eclipse never happened on the full moon. And the Passover during Jesus' crucifixion is deliberately people choosing during the Passover. So that's why Jesus, like the Lamb of God, was slain during the Passover. It's happened during the Old Testament. The deliverance. The Jewish people get out from Egyptian. Okay. Read at 27, verse 54. Matthew 27, 54. When the centurion and those with him who were guarding Jesus saw the earthquake and all that happened, they were terrified and exclaimed, surely he was the son of God. Before, when you read, people don't believe it, he's, he's a son of God. But after the darkness, okay, after the darkness happened, people terrified. So they exclaim, surely he was the son of God. A lot of people experiencing the miracle And the purpose of the Lord, the miracle, changed the mind and the heart of the people. So after that, people believe in Jesus. They do never experience the miracle of Jesus. You never get the change of your mind and your heart to believe that Jesus is the Son of God. Okay, secondly, the miracle of darkness It's like as what 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 they call it. Oh, uh, explode something that become happen with the blow. Magnify the death of Jesus. 
the miracle of darkness to magnify the death of Jesus. If Jesus on the cross and and died and there is no darkness, it will happen like what happened all the Christianity during the Roman Empire and the time they put at the cross on the boulevard in a Roman uh, city. It's nothing happened. It's like that. Or if I just slay uh, the chicken, I cut it, it's nothing happened, okay? The chicken slime and darkness. No, no darkness. He died. She died like that. But when Jesus was slain on the cross and there was darkness, death magnified his silence. When you in the silence, you will hear. When I read this story, you know, Kuzbam, why? You hear the dripping blood of Jesus from the cross. Have you ever heard the story? The dripping of the blood of Jesus from the cross, from his nail, from his limb. I felt it's amazing. His blood is precious and dripping during the darkness. Okay. We read on the Luke chapter 12, verse 50. Luke chapter 12, verse 50. Twelve, verse fifty. But I have a baptism to undergo, and how distressed I am until it is completed. So Jesus explained himself about the suffering to come. The suffering that he will experience it. Also, open Hebrew 12, verse 2. Hebrew 12, verse 2. Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endures the cross scoring its sin and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Okay, let's open Isaiah 53 verse 3. I just want to give you information later on, you can read it again uh, about the proof what Jesus done from the Bible. He was the pious and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and familiar with suffering, like one from whom men hide their faces, he was despised, and he esteemed him not. Okay, maybe later on if you the can really understand the English, you can read in Indonesia. In this uh, very famous uh, verse, John 1, verse 29. Gospel John, chapter 1, 29. The next day, John saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Look, 
the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is before Jesus crucifixion. There is John. John is the beloved disciple. And he like prophesied Look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. So the third of the miracle of darkness means this is a symbol, it's a sign of the suffering of Jesus. Unimaginable. So when, when you remember about the darkness, remember the suffering of Jesus unimaginable, uncomparable. No one human being suffer like this. And never repeat again because no one will be crucified like Jesus and suffer with the unimaginable suffering. Okay. So Matthew chapter 27, verse 46. 27. Matthew 27, 46. About the nine hour, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? This is a sign that the Father show he has nothing to do with the suffering of Jesus. It's your own because you want to save the human being. You, the one, will suffer your own. I didn't take participate in your suffering. So Jesus, as human being, suffer the most suffering. So that's why he's like lost contact with the help of the Father. I think all, all, all of us who have a, a YouTube or whatever you experience it, that's a story about, I think the Disneyland make the movie. Baby Bear, have you ever heard about that? Baby Bear is walking around, wandering around, and then there is about, uh, I think it's a little part, something like that try to kill him, to catch him. And the baby bear running around and suddenly he want to ex escape, okay? And there is only one way, is crossing the river. There is a, a tree falling to another end. But before the baby bear can jump there, the tree cracked, and he falling down to the river. So, the tiger, whatever you call it, the tiger, is waiting from the bank of the river, and he follow the bear, bear uh, falling with the, the wood, and almost until the end of the bank, and the bear want to I mean, the, the tiger wants to get it and scratches the body of the, the baby bear. You know what happened, the story? The mother bear, with loud voice, crying out, whoa, and the tiger ran away. 
The story is not like this with Jesus. Jesus experienced by himself the suffering. Okay? So that's the reason. The moment is like this. Do always remember. So that's why they put it here. Eloi, Eloi, Lama Sabatani. Deliberately, the writer of the Bible catch the word when Jesus cried out. They put it part of the story. So everybody, when they read the Bible, they will get it the meaning why Jesus cried out. Okay, let's read on the Psalm 69, 26. Psalm 20, I mean 69, 26. For they persecute those who, those you wound and talk about the pain of those you hurt. For they persecute those you won't and talk about the pain of those you hurt. Okay, the long explanation you can read later on the Bible, the first before and after, okay? Before and after, you can understand what's the meaning of this. I deliberately put it this so you can read from uh, Old Testament prophecy. Amos 8, verse 9. Amos 8, 9. In that day, declares the Sovereign Lord, I will make the sun go down at noon and darken the earth in broad daylight. So that's happened. Right? The prophecy of Amos. So it happened during Jesus' crucifixion. The last one, Luke 23, verse 29. Luke 23, 29. For the time will come when will you will say, Blessed are the barren woman, the womb that never bore, and the breast that never nursed. 30. Then they will say to the mountains, Fall on us, and to the hills, cover us. 31. For if men do these things when the tree is green, what will happen when it is dry? Remember this. You remember about this, this uh, verses. It will happen during the suffering, the end of time. Okay? People will cry out like this. Because the suffering, the sorrows, unbearable, on those unbelief. On those unbelief. Only those who believe in Jesus never experience the sad sorrows. The last word, why the momentous consequence of Christ's crucifixion? All those who reject Christ will be lost. 
brothers and sisters, who are the one who listen to the message today. Yeah, I'm offer you. Please be careful in your life. Before the day of suffering is coming. And I offer to you that the salvation only in Jesus. He is the one that offered to you because he died on the cross to offer the salvation to everybody who reject him, who refuse to believe in those who mock him. But if you really want to be safe and happy life, accept his offering to believe in him. Amen. Let's pray. Dear Father, we understand now that the miracle of darkness happened with the purpose that Jesus died on the cross, the suffering to save human being. Is the suffering an imaginable, imaginable suffering that nobody can bear to suffer the such suffering? Please remember us, Lord. We as the sinner, like the thief on your side that cry out for your help. Please remember me when you are in the kingdom. Now you are on the throne of the Father in the kingdom. You watch us who live in this world that we suffer day by day in our sorrow with this suffering of this world. We ask your pardon. May you grant it us. Lord, we come to you. Bless us with all our effort to join, to participate in your business. Thank you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. <clears throat> Happy Easter. <laughs>